Big news from San Diego Unified as district officials announce a target reopening date of April 12th at tonight's school board meeting. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee in for Barbara Lee Edwards. The meeting started just about an hour ago and public comment is currently underway. This will be a hybrid model for all grade levels. News 8's Shannon Handy has more from San Diego Unified headquarters in this learning curve report. Marcella and Carlo, this is something these families have long been pushing for, holding rallies and calling into board meetings. Now, while it's not a full return to the classroom, it's a start, but still, these families say they won't celebrate until that April date comes to fruition. We need to make noise. We need to make our voices heard and let them know we're not settling. For months, the group Reopen SDUSD has been holding rallies calling for the reopening of schools. Leslie Hoffmeister co-founded the group after watching her kids struggle with distance learning. We have students that are being harmed, so we need to concurrently get back to school. Now, a glimmer of hope. Before tonight's meeting, San Diego Unified School Board President Richard Barrera announced to News 8, April 12th is a target date for in-person learning to resume for all grades on a hybrid model. Teachers will be welcomed back one week prior on April 5th to prepare. Hitting those dates are contingent on two key factors. The county is announcing that beginning next week, educators can start to get vaccinated. So if we can follow that timeline for the vaccinations, if we can continue to see the case rates come down at their current trajectory, then we're uh, very optimistic that by that week of April 12th, we will open up in-person learning to students at all grade levels. Barrera says students and staff will be tested for COVID-19 on campus every two weeks. In addition, safety protocols like ventilated classrooms and mask wearing will be in place. As for what the hybrid model will look like, that depends on how many students plan to return in person. Surveys will be sent out to parents so they can weigh in. In the meantime, some reacted to today's announcement during public comment at tonight's meeting. We've waited far too long to be waiting to finally come up with a plan for our students to be back in school. Now, families who choose not to return will still have the option to stick with virtual learning, and they will still have that option in the fall when Barrera expects schools to open up full time. If for some reason the numbers decline or there's a delay in the vaccination of teachers, that April date could be pushed back. The goal is to be in the red tier by April and to start vaccinating teachers as soon as this Monday. Tonight, Tiger Woods is in a Los Angeles area hospital with serious injuries following a rollover crash in Rancho Palos Verdes this morning. His SUV suffered so much damage that the pro golfer had to be freed through the windshield before being rushed to the hospital. Woods' agent said he suffered injuries to both legs and did require surgery. News 8's Brandon Lewis is live outside the hospital where Woods is being treated tonight with what we are learning about his condition. Brandon, what can you tell us? Well, he did undergo surgery that was completed earlier today on both of his legs, but this is an extensive effort and they said his injuries were quite severe. Uh, this is the closest trauma center to where this happened, but an indication that it wasn't necessarily life threatening is that they didn't take him immediately to the nearest hospital. They had time to transport him over this way. Let's give you a look though at what this crash looked like earlier today, but just a little bit after seven o'clock when it happened here. This is a very steep road and Los Angeles County deputies tell us that it's known for having crashes in the past and residents say you often have to just ride your brakes the whole way down and even then you're still going to hit about 50 miles per hour or so and we know that woods crashed into the meeting he then went into the oncoming lanes of traffic and then rolled several times down the embankment at this point investigators say there's no indication he tried to hit the brakes there aren't any skid marks on this road or anything else so it's really not clear why he crashed however on the scene, deputies said that he wasn't showing necessarily signs of impairment and that they didn't have to do a blood draw when he came to the hospital for this emergency surgery. No, no skid marks, no breaking. So apparently the first contact was with the center median and from there then cross into the opposing lane of traffic, hit the curb, hit a tree, and there was several uh, rollovers during that process. No evidence of impairment this time. That'll be subject to the investigation. Well, we're looking at uh, signs of uh, influ under the influence of either narcotics, medication, alcohol, odor of alcohol, all these different things that would give you an, an idea in their behavior, but there was none, none present. So since they were able to rule out that impairment, investigators say this will likely be a long process. They say it could take several days 
or weeks before they figure out what happened. As we come back out here live at the hospital, uh, Woods was conscious and breathing when he arrived here. He told staff and asked if they could reach out to a member of his team, let them know what happened so that they can t let his family know and uh, let others know as well. Carlo and Marcella. Such a crash there, Brandon. Now, do we know where Tiger was actually heading before that or why he was on that specific road to begin with? It's likely at this point that he was heading to a shoot that has to do with an upcoming uh, golf tournament. This was day two of a, a shoot that was taking place out there with a couple different celebrities, but the specifics of it haven't yet been confirmed yet uh, by Tiger Woods' team, but that's where he was likely heading uh, to take part in this, different, in this uh, celebrity shoot. All right, Brandon Lewis reporting live from Los Angeles where Tiger Woods is in the hospital after a bad crash. Thanks, Brandon. San Diego health officials report 454 new COVID cases today out of about 11,000 tests for a 4% positive rate. New COVID hospitalizations fell to 594. Those have declined 59% in the past month. The ICU count fell as well to 186, a 55% monthly drop. Another key number, the adjusted case rate is now down to 15 after peaking close to 70 in January. But 29 more deaths were reported. That total is now 3,218. Financial help is on the way for some struggling Californians. This morning, Governor Gavin Newsom signed a $7.6 billion COVID relief package that includes $600 stimulus payments. More than 5 million low-income Californians are eligible, including households of mixed citizenship status who missed out on the federal stimulus checks. And that's something, you know, frankly distinctive in this country. I don't know many other states, any other state that does what this state is doing. And for that, we are not ashamed. We are proud. Those receiving state or federal assistance based on income or disability are eligible as well. The payments will arrive about a month after filing your state tax return. Tonight, President Biden discussed the pandemic with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, pledging to work together to strengthen the World Health Organization. It was his first meeting with a world leader since taking office. Meantime, later this week, FDA vaccine advisors are expected to consider Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine. We are ready to begin shipping immediately and deliver enough single doses by the end of March to enable the vaccination of more than 20 million Americans. Tonight, congressional leaders led a bipartisan moment of silence at the Capitol to honor the more than 500,000 Americans lost to the pandemic. The CDC says so far, more than 82 million vaccine doses have been delivered nationwide. The Petco Park vaccination superstation is back up and running following a four day closure caused by delayed vaccine shipments. UCSD Health says appointments for second doses will be rescheduled. If yours was canceled, you are encouraged to keep checking your USD, UCSD My Chart online portal. That's your UCSD My Chart online portal or your email for any alert of a new appointment date. Meanwhile, the county opened another vaccine site today. This one in Otay Mesa at the Border View Family YMCA. It will be open Sunday through Thursday and will start administering 500 doses a day, but could expand to up to 1,000 doses a day. Another site will open this weekend at the Lemon Grove Community Center. That location will be able to administer 500 doses a day when fully operational. The San Diego Fire Department is scheduling appointments for those who are eligible. Appointments are available tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday at the Balboa Municipal Gym. To schedule an appointment there, visit san diego.gov slash COVID-19 vaccination. So nice to see more doses available. To say Max Lanai loved the great outdoors is an understatement. His parents called it his passion. Unfortunately, Max died after an accident during a run. And now his parents are working hard to make sure that no other parents feel their pain. News 8's Steve Price has their story. When Max and I headed out on a run here at Mission Trails Regional Park, the weather wasn't a concern, but about an hour and a half into his journey, things took a sudden big turn for the worse. We know because Max captured that change on his phone. It's a moody day. About 30 minutes after Max shot this video, the sky opened up with heavy rain and hail. This map of his route shows Max wasn't far from his car, but needed to cross a river to get there. And so he got to the river when he was very swollen. Uh, it, it was hailing 
and his car was only 10 minutes in front of him. Max's parents fear their son didn't realize the danger because a sign near the river shows that hiking and biking across it are okay. Unfortunately, the 21-year-old lost his footing and drowned. When Max didn't return home after dark, friends started frantically texting him messages his parents saw when authorities returned his phone. It was heartbreaking to read all the texts of all the friends who were clearly out looking for him and desperately trying to find him. That was um, really heartbreaking. Max's family is hoping something good can come from their loss. They are pushing for a footbridge across the river, an idea they got when they watched other families struggle to cross at that very same spot, even after the water level had already dramatically dropped. I became numb and I couldn't watch anymore because I thought someone else was going to perish in the same spot. It turns out a footbridge was in the park's master plan, but never got built. You know, they chose instead to allocate about $6 million of funding to a huge ranger station with elaborate art. Max's family has approached the city, but it seems they want a big bridge to handle cars and trucks, one that will cost millions of dollars and take a decade or so to complete. Max's family is hoping for a pedestrian bridge that can happen much sooner. I couldn't imagine anyone else going through the same pain and suffering that we are, and it needs to be fixed, and it needs to be fixed now. Max's family is collecting donations to help build the bridge. For more information, go to CBS8.com and click on this story. Steve Price, News 8. I know when Max died, a lot of people were wondering what happened to him, and so we thank his parents for sharing that really important, sad story. Yeah, it's a sad thing to happen, but hopefully something good can come of it, and we don't see that happen there again. Yeah, we thank them for making the change.